Alright, I wanted to do a, a little shorter sh video on um, how to use the Quadzilla Adrenaline with the, the V2.2 tuning uh, to tune your second gen VP44 Cummins. So I got the app open here. You can see my uh, default screen, basic gauge layout. Going to go up to the three in the right, upper right, and we're going to do our custom tuning. And here you can see I have uh, three different tunes. I got my daily, my race, and my stupid tune. Uh, along with the default profile. So we're going to do a new one there. We're just going to click new and we'll type in uh, Let's just do test So now we have test there in our tuning menu uh, any of these are switchable on the fly uh, They do take about 15 seconds to fully apply, but you can do those driving down the road or whatever you see fit So we're gonna hit the edit button on our on our uh, test tune here So first thing we're gonna have is uh, power levels how many you want right now it's on six what this is is how many total power levels you want keeping in mind that stock level zero is always counted as your first level I like to keep this low so I don't have to go jumping around in my uh, wiretap levels so I keep this at six typically but you can go all the way up to 15 uh, what that means is uh, from level three I guess it would be four and above you can split up the wiretap uh, resolution to be more per jump in level or less per jump in level. If you wanted just to have one or two levels of wiretap, you can leave that at six. Or if you wanted a bunch of different levels of wiretap to give you a slower ramp up in power, you can go all the way up to 15. RPM limit. Uh, what you can do with this is actually set the RPM limit between 3200 and 3700 RPM. Uh, keep in mind that not all trucks will fuel to 3700 RPM. Uh, but the Quadzilla will at least try to fuel to that point. If you do want to touch 4,000 revs, you're going to definitely want to get like a Quadzilla 4K box or something like that, but that's not really a street-friendly type setup. Most trucks will start to run out of steam at about 3,700 RPM anyway, so that's where we put the limit. In this case, we're going to do 3,400. So the truck will fuel right to 3,400 RPM. Valet mode power, what this is, is your level 1 setting. It'll actually set uh, 0 to 100% of OEM power. So if you wanted a stock fueling truck, you would put it at 100%. That is going to give you 100% of OEM fuel. If you wanted to do like an emissions tune, uh, you could set that at about 75% for a stock, um, stockish truck, and that would uh, make it so it would pass no matter what. Big injector truck, uh, say some 7 by 13, 7 by 12 should be able to pass emissions pretty easily, setting this at about 50%. So we're going to do 35. So 35% of OEM power on level 1. A stock truck probably won't dry with 35%. It'll probably pretty much stall out and die. If you wanted to use like an anti-theft mode, you can set this at same setting, the, the valet mode setting at, say, 15%, and that would pretty much kill the truck as soon as they tried to hit the pedal, the go pedal. So next we have our pump tap parameters. These are the ones that control the wire tap. You can see we have a couple of those there. Fuel stretch is how much wire tap we want to use. Um, this is pretty much the same as it's always been, 1,200 being low, 2,200 being high. Uh, the higher you go in this, the more torque you're going to make uh, at the downfall of more smoke, depending on how your tune is running. Uh, typically, stockish trucks, maybe 100-horse injectors, are going to run a wiretap setting in the 16 to 1,900 range. Uh, my daily driving tune is at 1,750, so we'll do 1,750. TPS pump maximum. That's where you're going to have the maximum amount of, of throttle or the maximum amount of fueling from wiretap based upon throttle position. I like this normally at 100, so I have higher resolution on the span of fueling on my truck. But say if you wanted to have your truck ramp up to maximum wiretap faster, you could use a setting like 80%, and that would make sure that once you hit 80% throttle, you're going to have uh, pretty much maximum wiretap. So we'll leave that at 100. Pump minimum is the lowest throttle position that you want wiretap coming on. Uh, a lot of times guys will set this at like 15 or 20 percent so their truck's not always, not always on wiretap. Uh, a lot of times daily driving you don't really need wiretap so there's no point in having it come on really low. So I do mine about 20 percent typically. Mm -hmm. 
minimum pump tap fueling percentage. What this is, is it allows you to set the very minimum amount of wire tap that will be applied. If you set this to zero, it'll be uh, ramping up very linearly, linear, linearly um, from a 0% wire tap all the way up to 100% wire tap. If you set it at 25, the lowest amount it'll ever go wire tap is 25. So you'll get a rather large part of the map as a starting point for your for your fueling. This will make a, a lot of seat of the pants feel. It'll also create really good dyno numbers um, and also possibly trade off a of smoke depending on your setup. Uh, I typically leave this at zero because I have the HX35 uh, or HE351VE, excuse me, so it's uh, spools good anyways. I don't need that. Pump low boost scale percentage. What that is is it sets the PSI level where wiretap comes on. So if you want your wiretap to come on immediately off idle, you'd leave that at zero PSI. Uh, big injector guys or twin guys typically want their wiretap to come on higher in the PSI. So what this does is actually moves the entire wiretap map up and down based upon PSI. Uh, you you know driving down the road if you have it set at 10 PSI, wiretap will not apply until you hit 10 PSI. I think my tune is set at about 8 PSI is when it comes on. Boost scaling. What this does is it actually compresses the entire wiretap map between zero and whatever PSI you have sitting here. So if you have it at 20 PSI, it's going to ramp up wiretap fueling twice as fast. Uh, typically, for anyone uh, other than stock trucks, we, we typically leave this at 40 PSI, maybe 35. So now we're going to move on to our timing parameters. Uh, what we have here are uh, the new version 2.2 timing parameters. What you can see is load timing increase, low PSI timing reduction, timing reduction scaling, and cruise timing advance. So the first one is actually a new tuning variable. What that does is it allows you to set how much timing you want to increase based upon load. Load being how much fuel is being injected into the engine along with other variables. But typically you can you can relate this to throttle position. If you're at 50% throttle position, you're probably pretty close to 50% load. Uh, that's obviously going to vary somewhat from truck to truck, but that's the easiest way I can explain it. So this doesn't actually increase overall timing. What it does is it pulls timing from the other variables until load is increased to 100%. So if you have a three degrees timing set here, it'll actually increase timing slower until load is increased to 100%. If you have it set at zero, your, R, your timing is going to pretty much increase 100% related to RPM. My tunes, I typically set this around one and a half or two degrees. So off idle, I'm not going to have as much timing as I would at wide open throttle. Next is PSI timing reduction. This is that low boost, high throttle situations. How much timing do you want to pull? Uh, typically, you're going to be starting your tunes about 14, 15 degrees of timing. You might want to pull some of that timing down low to help spool the turbo. This will actually allow you to do that. I set this typically for myself around 2.5. So down low in the throttle position, if I'm cruising along and then I hit the throttle, low boost, it'll actually pull 2.5 degrees of timing. That should assist with turbo spool up depending on your situation. Timing reduction scaling is going to allow you to scale how fastly that timing ramps up. If you want a lot of timing very low in the in the curve to be pulled because of throttle position going to a high load, uh, you do want to set this to a lower value. So say you set this at 50%, what that's going to do is give you 50% of your 2.5 degrees timing. If you set it at 100, it'll give you a full 100% of two and a half. So what you can do with this is set your timing reduction to say five degrees. Even though you don't want five degrees to be pulled, you can pull two and a half very low in the map. Typically I'll leave this at 100 because I don't need to pull a significant amount. Cruise timing advance. What this is, it allows you to set how much timing advance you want at cruise state. Cruise state's going to be above 35 miles an hour, not changing speed, and not changing throttle position. So if you're at a steady speed and a steady throttle position, it'll try to advance cruise timing. Now this timing amount is based upon a 17 degree base timing. Typically our trucks on the interstate, you'll see if you're doing about 55 in stock tuning, they'll be sitting around 17 degrees of timing, a little bit more, a little bit less, depending on load. 
as soon as you start top, topping about 65, you can see that timing drop off significantly down to about 12 to 13 degrees. You go to 75, that pulls all the way down to about 11. That's why we see such a significant reduction in mile per gallon as you speed up. So this is a base 17 degrees. So if you want 20 degrees timing at cruise, you'd put three degrees here. That's typically what I do. Most, most trucks will benefit from about 19 to 20 degrees of total timing at cruise. So again, it's 17 degree base timing plus whatever you want here. I'd highly suggest you not going over three and a half degrees on cruise unless you have head studs or a specially modified truck. So now we're going to go on to the RPM max timing max settings. What this is, is how much timing maximum you want at a given RPM. So you can see we have it split up into 500 RPM intervals, starting at 1500, 2000, 2500, 3000, and then on top of 3500, you'll get that maximum. So about 1500 RPM, uh, our OEM truck likes to keep it um, somewhere around 11 to 12 degrees until I'd say 2400 if you're on the throttle. Once you hit about 2400 RPM, that's when timing starts to come off bottom an increase up to about 25, 26 degrees of timing max. That's where you can see the green lines inside the red. That's kind of what the typically accepted safe zone is for timing in our trucks. Uh, again, you don't want to go outside of those zones unless you have a modified truck with studs and uh, can handle the increased timing. So you can actually move these up and down. 18 degrees, that'd be too much for my truck. I'm going to go ahead and put that at 16 degrees for my truck. So at 1500 RPM, we're going to have 16 degrees of timing if load is at 100%. Again, since my load is 2 degrees, if I'm at 50% load at 1500 RPM, it's going to have 14 degrees because half of 2 degrees is 1 degree. 1 degree or 15 degree minus 1 degree is going to be 14 degrees total. If you go up to 100% load at 1500 RPM, you'd actually get that 15 degrees of timing. So 2000 revs, I'm going to do about 18 degrees. 2500, I'm going to go about 22. 3000, I'm going to go up to about 24. And above 3500, I'm going to go to 30, 26. So there's my timing curve. Um, this is going to significantly differ from OEM timing. As I said before, OEM likes to keep timing down below 12 degrees until you start to get pretty high in the revs. It doesn't seem to be related to fueling too much, and it doesn't seem to be related to boost. So you're going to get a lot more meat under the curve with this type of tune. Um, I would say OEM is going to be 11, 12, 13, 13 to 14, and then you're going to jump up to 17, and then... I don't know, maybe a little higher, 20 degrees there, maybe maybe 24 here. Depends on the truck, but uh, it's not, not quite as linear with OEM tuning. So we're going to save that curve. So the CAN bus tuning, what this is going to do is give you 0 to 30 plus PSI settings. All of these are based upon OEM fueling. So if you want 100% stock truck, you'd leave all of these at 100%. If you wanted to ramp up fueling faster, you could increase all of these and that give you 115 percent of stock up until 3 psi so big injector trucks you might drop that down to 77 and what that would do is give you a very clean running nice running truck but you might want to ramp up to higher power as you go up all the other tuners on the market up until this point have all been above OEM tuning, so it didn't have the ability to pull power down low. Now, it's not actually going to be slower than stock by going below power because you have bigger injectors in this situation to make up for that. With my 7x9 injectors, my starting point's about 88%. I know guys running uh, 7x13s are starting about 72 to 75%. Uh, this is going to give you a very drivable truck off idle. You're not going to smoke out the intersections, but you'll be able to ramp up fueling rather quickly. So there's been a lot to talk about the maximum CAN bus power achievable with our trucks, how everyone says it's about 65 horsepower. Uh, that's going to be fairly true with a stock power truck, but once you get bigger than stock injectors, that number kind of goes out the door. Uh, more so, it's related to about a percentage over stock. I've seen stock fueling message of 3,600. Um, the allowable size for our trucks is 4,095. 
That's not related to PSG tuning. That's not related to ECM tuning. That's related to the fueling message structure. There's two bytes in the fueling message that allows for the resolution of fueling. The maximum number you can get with two bytes is 4,095. So like I said, OEM touches about 35, 3,600. So what that means is percentage over stock that we can achieve is approximately 15%. So once you get up to higher revs, going over about 125 is not going to be any beneficial thing. Uh, you might want to go up higher or lower in the curve so you get more power beneath the curve because OEM is not going to max, max out fueling until you get to about 20, 20 PSI, 18 PSI. Good thing is you can data log with this. You can see where you're maxing out fuel. So you'd want to go in through and set every one of these to make a fueling curve that you like. Once you get above, I don't know, 10, 12 PSI, you can ramp up fueling pretty much as fast as you want and not have any downside. Uh, I know my tune starts off about 88, and it goes up by 1% until 8 PSI, and then I start jumping by 2 until about 14, and then I'm jumping by 4% until I'm maxed out about 22, 26 PSI. Once you get that done, you just hit save, and you have your new tune here. You can load it on the fly, and you're good to go.